A year ago today, our lives changed forever. After years of living off-grid without constant electricity, we finally switched on our DIY off-grid solar power system. Having electricity has impacted every aspect of our day-to-day -day lives, including how we eat, the time we spend together as a family, and the appliances and tools we use to complete our everyday jobs. Our water pump was, and still is, run by electricity. So when the generator was off, it meant no water. Our solar power system means we can turn the tap on any time of day and get water. A year on, we still don't take that for granted. There were some appliances that we just couldn't use, either due to the high load or the fact that they just weren't necessities. One of our favourite additions has been our bread maker. As well as our aircon and heating unit and the kettle. We would never have run the generator just to watch TV. And whilst it doesn't play an integral role in our lives, it still has its place. Some people assume that living off-grid means a step away from using technology and a step backwards in order to have a closer connection to nature. We don't believe that this is the case, but instead see an off-grid life backed by modern day technology as the future and a step towards what life should be like. As our children grow, they will have access to technology and we believe computing skills will stand them in good stead for a future in an ever-changing world, as well as having a connection to nature and a love of the outdoors. Whilst we support one another through all projects, it was Fraser who researched, planned and installed the solar power system. It's, it's just getting people you trust in to do things really and doing properly with our borehole. You know, we had one of the experts out, asked him about, you know, whether it was a good site to have the water on, whether you could actually draw salt. He said, no, 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 we've done ones in the village and uh, we paid him and then it was salt water. So for all these things, you just think, you know, are there any actual experts out there? And similarly, we've had people with the solar come to us and say, I paid for someone to do this and then had to pay again for someone to put it right. And that's not uncommon with the solar situation, people not doing things quite correctly. And um, we're DIYers and we don't know everything. But I think the egos of some of the um, installers is just amazing. I mean, one guy on our channel said that uh, you're not a time-served installer. Well, it's obvious because it's DIY off-grid. And um, that uh, he's a time-served installer of three years. I've done courses that have lasted longer than three years and at no point as a tree surgeon would I have ever boasted um, three years as being time served, it'd be more like ten. To assume you know everything and attack others is really wrong because even Victron have made mistakes. I think that's what puts people off, it's that sort of mentality, they're not so great, they're only great in their own heads. This is why we have little faith in a lot of people when it comes to things like this. Uh, so we didn't buy a kit because um, it didn't have all the things we wanted. It wasn't the panels we wanted. Some of the kits had sharp panels and we wanted LG. And as we read further into it, I started to get a bit more confidence in that we could put something together. We're still learning um, quite a lot actually. So we, obviously we learnt how to put the solar stuff together and it all works. You know, we're confident in, in how we've done it. Angles of the roof is probably the thing that people um, keep bringing up. And we looked into it and into it and into it at the time. People were saying a winter angle would be best because you get plenty of sun in the summer. In the winter, you need that more upright angle and, um, and that sort of thing. Um, but then you read on and people saying that, well, if it's very cloudy, you actually get the sun bouncing off of the cloud and you get that is better on more of a summer angle. It would be our batteries. The batteries have been a problem from the start and there isn't a customer service base for Pylon Tech. It's, it's complete crap, quite honestly. Um, I've spent a long time looking, asking questions and Pylon Tech don't get back to you. There's a problem with early batteries, we've been keep getting told, of Pylon Tech batteries where 
they need upgrading with firmware. You can't go to Pylon Tech and find upgrades in firmware, whereas other batteries you can get the firmware updates. People are relying on random bits of firmware that have been put out on random sites uh, to upgrade their firmware on their Pylon Tech batteries. So we'll be making a video about that soon uh, once we find out what is exactly wrong with our batteries and how to solve it. Uh, there will be a video coming out. Possibly, but there's lots of things we're uh, planning on doing in the way to generate electricity. If we're talking about um, just solar, we have talked about putting a winter array in. We're also looking at um, wood-fired gasification for a generator to generate um, electricity. As fuel prices continue to increase, we are moving away from fuel-powered tools, where possible, and replacing them with electric. The Makita range has been great for this, and we charge the batteries using our solar power. We're also able to weld using our solar power system, as you may have seen in previous videos. In our videos on solar, we tend to focus on the numbers. We produce X amount on a rainy day, we generated X amount of kilowatt hours in winter. But for us, it is so much more than numbers. It's being able to live our lives with the best of both worlds. It's being able to make a life that can be challenging that little bit easier. And most importantly, it's being able to raise our children in a way which prepares them to join society when they are older, however they choose to live their lives. <laughs>